Yeah. So as you mentioned, you know, way, way back in, you know, the, the late 2000s playing playing rap shows with people such as yourself mm -hmm. getting started in the music scene. I didn't really know anybody. And then over time, you meet people, you meet people that play instruments, you get a band together, then all of a sudden I have a band and then more time passes and then you put out some albums and more time passes and over the course of time you kind of feel like you need a change up you need to switch things up after so long and that's kind of what happened and what brought about this whole normal creatures thing was i had been making music under the name sykes for so long that i just kind of wanted a a fresh coat of paint and also it got to a point you know i was working with a group of really really talented people but it was just sykes and the new violence but it didn't so it didn't feel fair to them because it's like you know it's all of us together it's not me and them it's us so did the name change and that's about it and here we are awesome awesome uh i, I i've been checking out uh some of your videos here and this is this is one from a, a bit ago did you do is this am i am i looking at a video did you do a, a a socially distanced music video at some point here yeah we actually um we recorded uh this was actually like a live recordings uh where we had uh the drummer track all the drums mm -hmm. then send it to the bass player track the bass parts then he sent it to the guitar player he tracked the guitar stuff then sent it back to me and tracked the vocals and everything was filmed uh multi-cam just all sent everything to and then sent it all to me and i edited it all together and it was a fun little sort of thing to do but mm -hmm. yeah it was definitely a quarantine live thing that took about a lot longer than it should have to be honest <laughs> but to, between getting everybody to actually do it and figure out how to make everything work and all that stuff and get the files sent over but it happened you mm. can do this now where there's a will there's a way absolutely so so you know we were talking about um earlier about how how this kind of timed out well like the pandemic started you were already kind of set to to kind of start work on an album and, and start creating this uh this content for this here so 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 talk about you know you 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 know of course um you know, you're an independent artist, you know, uh, uh, that, the, the, there's so many tools to be doing that these days. I mean, if, if I could have, make an album in 2007, I can't imagine. I mean, well, we're seeing what you can do these days. <laughs> so it's become so much more accessible. Um, so, so, you know, was it, you know, w was it kind of a, a, uh, um, a, uh, a, a release with everything going on during it? Did it influence the album a bit? You know, I mean, so much of the stuff had already been written. Mm -hmm. It was just like, well, now we got to figure out how are we actually going to record this? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, finding all of these like nuggets of time where it's like, is it okay for us to hang out and record this? Do we do like one person at a time, wait two weeks, record somebody else? Like all this like kind of nagging sort of stuff when we were trying to figure out like the best way to actually record these songs. Everything was written. Everything was ready to go. But, um, you know, it was nice just being able to focus on getting the stuff done and not be distracted with shows or feeling rushed. Also, um, had it not been a pandemic, I probably would have tried to get it done a lot quicker so we could play shows before the summer instead of just like, well, we'll just record all the way through the summer because nobody's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which it, and I think it, everything turned out a lot better as a result. And the thing that's been cool, too, is that we've been putting together so much video content because there aren't shows to play. And it's like, I don't think we would have put together this content otherwise. And it's cool because this stuff's on the internet forever, but like the shows, like people might film the show and post it, but it's not going to look like that video you just played. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to at least have that out there for people to discover us. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about this music video. Cause it's got a really cool style to it. Uh, so yeah, uh, the video was, uh, I came up with the concept. I, I shot it, um, with my friend, Nathan King and I edited it and did all the effects and everything for it. Um, it was really just like, I had a, a Google doc sheet of all these random ideas for a music video. And I was like, how could, what, how can I put all of these ideas together and make something happen? And granted, I didn't use everything that was in the doc but I like scripted something together and just like put together a story 
in uh, Adobe Premiere actually with Google Image. So they just went to Google Images and like basically <laughs> storyboarded the, a version of this music video to like make sure the timing and make a, a narrative that makes sense. And then uh, after that was done, I like brought my computer to the video shoot and like literally used that as like, well, we got to film this thing now, this thing next, this <laughs> thing next. I had like each scene on a different channel in Premiere. So we just went through each, uh, each channel, like, okay, everything that's in this corner of this room, we got to do now. And then I don't know, not to like get into the weeds of how I shot this video, but uh, yeah, it was just like a bunch of silly ideas that we kind of put together and shot in a day. Uh, actually the whole shoot was maybe only like three and a half hours. It was mm -hmm. really, really quick because it's so much green screen. It was a lot more, a lot more time editing. <laughs> I, I, I'm film, familiar with the process. Um, I've been doing a lot of music videos over the last several years with, uh, Nick Iben. um, that, you know, again, just kind of like a lot of like, you know, Hey, Hey, can we do something like, like, like Metallica's one video and things like that. Right. And, uh, you know, some, some 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 are performance videos some are kind of narrative videos you know like a lot of trying a lot of different concepts it looks like you threw every concept at this <laughs> yeah yeah you know i i, I love just, it you know I, I i knew that i wanted to tie in the album artwork because like we had mm -hmm. the album artwork before the video um the album art so i was like okay like you know i had all of these ideas and then the thing that like really clicked in my head was like oh what if everybody gets put inside the album cover? And uh, the one thing that actually wasn't on the album cover is there's like that that uh, green the green triangle road with the bodies running on the bottom of the album cover that got added after the music video because mm -hmm. those we actually the those images are actually from the video shoot and I added it into the cover afterwards, which it brought I don't know it was, it was a happy accident, but that's the case with most art I think that's awesome that's awesome uh uh so 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 you're, you're doing this you're still doing the starts to beat start to beat i keep pluralizing thing i apologize start to beat podcast as well uh tell, <laughs> tell everybody that's not familiar a little bit about what that show is yeah so start the beat as a podcast uh you know i i i i brand it as a uh can i say can i say the a word am i allowed to swear yes, on this yes we get one swear per show <laughs> Okay, well, it's a wholesome <laughs> ass podcast highlighting underground entertainment in the Pittsburgh area, and uh, I've been doing the show since 2014. Uh, I'm really close to 400 episodes. I'll probably hit that soon. Uh, it's been cool. It's a lot of fun. I just talk with artists, musicians, comedians, restaurant tours, YouTubers photographers whatever it's not music exclusive it's not pittsburgh exclusive anymore either but for the most part that's about it so yeah Your, yours always seemed to be kind of an in-person podcast it felt like a, a mm -hmm. you know anytime i've checked it out and of course you, you know i've noticed you've been doing more remote has that been um has that been uh, kind of a challenge to, to switch up to that for you dude it's awesome. <laughs> I love <laughs> not having to go anywhere or do anything. Uh, current, I had current, studio. Case, current case in point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I had a studio for a while. Um, and to be fair, whenever I can, I will probably get another studio. The goal is I want to have a space where bands can actually come in and perform while I'm interviewing them. Uh, and I was actually go about to move into a space right before all of the pandemic stuff happened. That was the thing that was going to be, uh, working on the new podcast studio and recording this album. Those were going to be the two, you know, the, the winter 2020 plan. That was, that was what was going to happen, but it didn't. Uh, so yeah, uh, recording remotely, it was a little weird for like, you know, the first couple episodes, just figuring out like what platform to use and how to connect things. I had never used OBS before in my life, so I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. But uh, luckily, during the pandemic, I was recording three episodes a week. So I learned really, really quick. Yeah, absolutely. It looks great. It looks awesome. And it's amazing that's OBS, too. Like, that's that's a lot of cool uh, visualization that's going on over there. Um, so uh, that's great. So um, I have to laugh because I wa I'm watching the show on my phone to see, mm -hmm. like, the captions and things. And it was wholesome ants, A N T S podcast. You have a wholesome ants podcast. <laughs> yo, 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 wholesome ants. That sounds like some 
like a Disney franchise. What, those ants, no, those DreamWorks. That's not Disney. I think, is it? No, I no. think they a Bug's Life is Disney, yes. right? Yes. Am I mixing this up? They both had one. They both actually had one like the same year for some reason. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah. A Bug's Life was Disney, right? Ants yeah. is DreamWorks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. All right. Yeah. But um, that's awesome. So uh, I, I got I to gotta bring up because um, I, I think the last time we, we hung out was at uh, um, our friends uh, that I don't think they're doing the show anymore at Thrifty Podcast. You were doing these awesome. Um, they were like podcast house parties. It seemed, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and 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 you told a great story about Mortal Kombat. Oh yes, yes, yes. Should I should I should I dig yeah, into yeah. this again? Just yeah, a, a, just, a just the short notes. version of it. It's, yeah. It's... So so, Mortal Kombat. Uh, I, I basically is the reason why I've done anything in my life productive. <laughs> um. You know, I started drawing Mortal Kombat characters with a friend of mine in grade school, and that got me into art. And like, I was like making my own comic books and like drawing what my website would look like. And uh, from there, I got into doing like graffiti and stuff, which introduced me to the hip hop community, which introduced me to like start making music and, you know, blah, blah, blah. The ball rolls down the hill. And uh, that's pretty much it. But it all started with Mortal Kombat in some way. And then I, I realized that and uh, I got the logo tattooed on me when I was like maybe, you know, 18 or 19 years old. And it was really just because of that. I had that realization that I had Mortal Kombat to thank for all of the nonsense I'd gotten into. I'm not even really that good at Mortal Kombat. A lot of people think that I'm like some Mortal Kombat savant and like want to challenge me. And I'm like, yo, it's a whole nother thing. It has nothing to do with actually liking the game. It's just kind of a, a symbol of my roots, which says a lot. But hey, I'm a child of the 90s. What do you want? <laughs> Excited about the new movie coming out in a couple months that I think we've seen nothing about yet, right? Yeah, you know what? I keep hearing about it. I really haven't seen anything. I'm excited. I'll go see it. I don't hold a whole lot of personal investment in like new pop culture or like reinvigorated franchises. Like, I don't care. You can ruin the Ninja Turtles. You can ruin Star Wars. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I have all of this stuff from when I was a kid. It doesn't make much of a difference. Although the Mandalorian was tight and I was very thankful for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, that's totally fine. I mean, I like Mortal Kombat Annihilation, to be honest with you. I just, you know, I, I, I kind of enjoy garbage things <laughs> to well, some degree. Like, I, I think it, and Mortal Kombat was never a series that took itself seriously. So yeah. when you make a movie that doesn't entirely take itself seriously, like, that's kind of okay. Yeah, I feel like if you're, like, going in, if, if you're about to open your mouth and say something critical about Mortal Kombat Annihilation in the same way that you would judge, like, I don't know, like Requiem for a Dream. Like this isn't some <laughs> cinematic art piece, you know. <laughs> this is like some Darren Aronofsky film. It's a movie about a video game. Like, it, it, and at this what point, do you want? and at this point, a video game that included babalities and friendships. Yeah, yeah. totally. Great point. Great point. <laughs> and you're just like, I'm going to get weirded out when they turn into like. Well, they turn into dragons or something at the end or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the animalities. Animalities. Thank you. Yes, oh. yes, yes. This The CG is quite bad, but it is good because it's so it's so bad. It's good as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Nobody's going to take that away from me. That's awesome. Uh, again, if people want to check out uh, what's going on uh, with you, where can they find out the album? And everything else so yeah this, this friday everything will be out uh you can go to our website it's just normalcreatures.net and if you're somebody that's into hanging out on facebook and live streaming stuff we're having a fake stream on friday night uh it's our album release party uh and we're calling it a fake stream because it's already been filmed and edited and produced but it's <laughs> still going to be live and there's some other dumb gimmicks that we have tied into it too that I don't want to spoil, but uh, yeah, that's Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on Facebook.com/slash Normal Creatures, or just go to normalcreatures.net 
and uh, there's a link to the the event in there as well. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, hang out. We got a lot of more awesome things to talk about. In the meantime, I want to uh, chat with, chat about, chat with, 